All right. Well, we will go ahead and uh, get started. Just a real quick um, note here. If you weren't at last night's NYO meeting, hopefully you got the email and then you can watch the recording for last night's uh, coaches meeting. Tonight, basically what we're wanting to do is go over the three events that are due by April 11th of midnight, April 11th, right? Yeah. Here. Yes, midnight, April, there we go. Midnight, April 11th, uh, next Sunday. So basically any time between now and the 11th, you can submit videos for Alaskan high kicks, scissor, broad jump and wrist carry if the link is available. Um, and those are the three events that we're gonna start with tonight. And let's go ahead and start, um, what's the agenda say? I have Alaskan high kick first. Alaskan high kick and we'll play each of the vid video tutorials which are available on the CITC website and available on YouTube. Um, and then following the video tutorial which was put together by CITC with a grant from Nike N7 um, we'll do a live demonstration with Kyle Whirl. He also happens to be the Southeast uh, or Juno coach. And then uh, we'll answer any questions uh, after the demonstrations. So along with the demonstrations, we'll be giving some pointers um, of the events that we are uh, doing for, this, for, the, for the following week. Um, so Adele, if you would start us off with the Alaskan High Kick video tutorial. This is the Alaskan High Kick. An athlete will start by sitting on the floor with two hands behind him. With one hand, he'll reach across and grab his opposite foot. His leg will lay out to the side just a little bit, and he can grab any part of his foot. From here, leaning back on his other hand, he'll take his other foot and plant it on the floor. This will be his kicking foot. When he's ready, he will lift and pull up on this foot while balancing on his back hand and kicking foot. When he's ready, he'll lift up and kick the ball, come back down and land without any part of his bottom touching the floor. At the same time, lifting kicking and landing. When he lands, he must keep his balance. He can also hop around after he lands. After each successful round, the ball is raised approximately four inches at a time. Every time the ball is raised, the athlete gets three tries. Again, he's going to hang on to that foot the entire time, lift, kick the ball, and land, maintaining his balance. There are three different hand positions, flat palmed, up on your fingers and thumbs, or on your fist. Not only is Andrew pulling up on the foot he is holding onto, he is also kicking that foot up. He uses it to help him balance as he goes into a vertical position, always keeping his eyes on the target until he hits it. After kicking the target, he must land on the same side he takes off from. The Alaskan high kick requires a lot of body control. Here are some of the things you should avoid. Kicking past the vertical position, letting go of the foot, and landing behind the hand. The Alaskan high kick is a game that was played inside the native people's small houses and huts. Because this game takes up very little room, it was a great way to stay in shape and to see who could leave their footprint on the highest part of the inside of the hut. You said you wanted to show the demonstrations that we had made in-house, in, in correct? Yes. So yeah. we also did some demonstrations of athletes. <clears throat> this is an eighth grade um, athlete which gives you a better idea of normally what the athletes look like when they're first learning how to do it or have little experience doing the games. 
This event is the Alaskan High Kick. Harry is going to start by sitting on the floor, not too far away, not too close. He's going to place one hand behind him on the floor, flat palmed, fingers facing away. His other hand is going to reach across and grab his opposite foot, any part of his foot, top, bottom, toes, any part of his foot. From here, he's going to push off the floor with the foot he's going to kick with down here. He's going to use this foot to help him by lifting up and kicking that foot up. He kicks the ball, lands, maintains his balance on his foot and hand without any other part of his body touching the floor. After he successfully kicks the ball, we raise the ball four inches higher. That's the Alaskan high kick. So just, um, just a few things there is they can take off right from the floor, right from their bottom, or they can lift themselves up off of the floor and then, and then kick. Um, you saw it a couple different ways in the N7 video um, with our adult athlete. And then with our junior athlete, he started up off of the floor. Um, Kyle, I'm gonna push it off to you now so you can talk about um, a little bit of coaching and the techniques you use for Alaskan high kick. And we cannot hear you if you're talking. Can you hear me now? Now we can hear you. Okay. Um, all right, uh, I'm going to share a few of the tips that I use for coaching um, Alaskan high kick and everybody has a different way of coaching Alaskan high kick, but some of these things I found useful um, for my athletes. So I'm going to demonstrate uh, with the ball here. Let me make sure you can see. So I really recommend an athlete starts on the floor. They do have the option to start up. But if you're starting on the floor, you're giving yourself a few extra inches to launch your body before leaving the floor. So I would recommend starting from the floor, um, practicing pulling the foot that you're not kicking with, so bringing that foot up as well. And what's really important, and we always drill into the athletes, is bring your hips up. And so once you get to a higher height, it's really about how high you can bring your hips. So, so watch my hips. I'm gonna do this without lifting my hips and it's gonna be, um, you're gonna watch it two different ways. So this is without using your hips and you're just kicking. You notice that my hips don't even move. So if you see an athlete doing that, let them realize they're doing that because they might not realize what they're doing. But what they want to do is lift the hips as high as they can. So I'm going to do this again, bringing the hips up. So you can see how much higher you can kick if you can get your hips up. And that takes some practice. So a few things we do is you can use a mat and have them start at a low height, maybe just one mat and jump onto it. Try that out a few times. If you have more mats, you could try a higher height. Or if you have a stable, probably not a chair, but this is what I have right now. Practicing bringing those hips up, you can get it on a chair. Um, a technique I learned from Paul Paul, the coach in Kipnuk, is their athletes jump on a wall. I'm gonna try that out. Oh, I need this. So jumping on a wall. And then trying to hold it there. That's another technique. Um, and Kipnuk is really amazing at Alaskan high kick. Um, a lot of their athletes can go vertical. Those, those are some techniques. What we also do is once you have an athlete 
max out. Let's say this is their last successful height and they're um, not getting it anymore. We'll move into what we call practice kicks, which is letting go of the foot. And so I'm gonna use this arm as momentum. Throw it up and get a little bit more height like that. So that we call that practice kicks at a higher height. It's almost like doing a cartwheel or a backflip. And what it's good for is getting used to the feeling of bringing your hips up because oftentimes you don't know what it feels like to go vertical until you bring your hips up. And that's what the, the point of this is to get that feeling, getting used to it. It's a new feeling. <clears throat> so those are a few techniques. Any questions on those? So I wanted to point out a couple of things there. The first exercise that Kyle did, jumping uh, up to the mat and then up to the chair that teaches the athlete how to push off and use the strength that they have in their kicking leg. <clears throat> the one up against the wall not only helps with the pushing off of the leg for kicking, but also helps build the strength in the shoulder and <clears throat> gets them to feel that weight balance up above their hips up above their shoulder as well. And then um, of course, the one without holding on to your foot gives them that full experience of kicking the ball and getting your hips up above that height. Because getting that, when the hips get above that height and they're kicking above that height, um, your shoulder takes a lot of uh, strain and it's a good way to build the strength um, to and the balance and coordination for your shoulder and balancing on that one hand. Yeah, and using a variety of coaching techniques because every athlete is different and using different techniques with them and um, talking about it in different ways will connect with athletes in different ways. So I just try every technique I have in the box. Any other questions? Awesome, you guys are easy. <laughs> All right, scissor broad jump. We didn't want to show any, and maybe we still have the same group from yesterday, any of the examples of, of submissions and how they should look. Yeah, go ahead and, and show a submission. That's great uh, if you've got one, a good one handy. I do, I, I made sure I had some good ones. Okay. So, ball is now 54 inches off the floor. Triton, Alaska high kick. Go ahead. You're high enough. Take your time. Got it. Nice job. Okay, good job. And the main part of that um, submission was that they were able to show the measurement, um, and that can either be before or after your guys' attempts. Yep. Uh, so now I will show a pull up scissor broad jump video. This event is called the scissor broad jump. Stuart's gonna start by standing behind a line with both feet, either apart or together. It's personal preference of each athlete. From this position, there are four steps he will take, trying to go as far as he possibly can with those four steps. The first step, he'll jump off of both feet and land on one foot. 
Second step is the scissor step. His back leg must cross behind scissor and land in front of the original position of the foot on the floor. The third step is forward onto one foot. The last step, jump, land on both feet, and stay there until we can measure the distance from the start line to the heel that is closest to the line. Once you learn these four steps, the event should look like this. Jump, scissor, step, land, and stick it, just like that. Some of the common mistakes in the scissor broad jump are the takeoff and the scissor step. A lot of athletes will step forward instead of jump. We want the athletes to actually jump off of both feet and land on one foot. Second common mistake is the scissor step. From the scissor position, this back leg must cross behind and land on the floor in front of the original position. So it should look like this. And the athlete keeps their balance, then continues forward. Here's a front view jumping off of both feet, landing on one, the second step, the scissor, then forward. Use your arms to help propel you forward through each step and land low to help keep your balance and stick it. The scissor broad jump was played to help develop the skills hunters needed to jump from one ice flow to the other or to assist with crossing creeks. Someone had a question in the box, but I will go ahead and go to the new share. <clears throat> I'm not seeing any questions. Oh. That was me to Adele. Oh, <clears throat> okay. This is the scissor broad jump. Harry's going to start by standing behind a line. From this position, he jumps off of both feet onto one foot. Scissors with the next foot, steps forward for the third step, last jump and land on both feet, sticking his landing and maintaining his balance. jump is then measured from the heel that is closest to the start line. Did you want me to show the um, demonstration or the yes. example? Okay. Yes, please. Combat controls. Okay. Are you ready? Harris, whenever you're ready. Good, let's get a measurement. Okay, you want the left left heel, thank you. All right, right there. Oh, perfectly on. Where are we at, uh, Triton? 18 feet, eight inches. 18 feet, eight. So one of the questions um, is, some athletes have a more dominant foot takeoff. Is that considered a scratch? Um, the athletes have to jump off of both feet at the same time. Um, so they cannot step forward. They have to jump off of both and land on one foot. So whatever is their dominant foot is the foot that they're going to be landing on 
um, when they take off from both feet. If they step instead of jump, uh, that is a scratch. One of the other common mistakes that we see is the athlete's feet doing a little step right before they take off from, from the start line. So their, their, uh, their foot makes a tiny little jump just over the start line right before they, they take off. Um, we'll have Kyle go ahead and show a little demonstration of that as well. Um, so yeah, the takeoff, oops. Yep. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, you're the spotlighted. Take, take, yep. Takeoff can be tricky. Um, you do want to take off both feet and sometimes it's just building that muscle memory of how to jump off both feet. So a proper jumping off both feet, landing on one, an improper is jumping, taking a step. Um, sometimes the athlete's really getting ready. And at the last moment, if you notice that, I jumped over the line. I jumped on it. They do almost a little hop and then go. Yep. They, they really want to be aware of their feet, that they're not inching forward or doing a hop and then going. You can practice that two foot takeoff by just having them do broad jumps, jumping two feet to two feet. And doing that repetitively to build that muscle memory. Um, and they should be pushing off with their toes. So they want to feel their toes push off. Um, take off and then the other tricky part is landing. So you got your scissor step, front leg, and then on that last jump, I'm gonna to jump towards you all. Wide stance, go into a squat. You're gonna have much more better balance having your legs apart and jumping into that squat. Another key part is the scissor step. So I'm gonna to jump towards you all because I think that's the only way you can, I can stay in screen. So jumping off two, this is the step where a lot of people can gain a lot more distance, but they're so focused on switching really quick that they don't gain any distance in their scissor step. Um, Adele, do you think you could make me a co-host and I can share a video of, I have a video of Nick pulled up. Nick Hansen is the world record holder for scissor broad jump. And if you watch his jumps, he gains distance with every single jump using his arms every single time. So a lot of kids, they get too focused. They want to run up to it. You're not allowed to do a running approach and it's not necessarily going to help. You want to think about putting power and slowing down your jumps. And Nick is um, pretty amazing. Well, he's the world record holder. You know how to do, um, or is that? Um, enabled co-host if you do participants and scroll over my name. Your co your host now. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so um, let me just present this real quick. So these are some of our coaching tips is practice uh, broad jumps to take off both feet. Don't go too fast. Um, and then uh, on the scissor st step, you can gain more distance by lifting the front leg out of the way. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like. This is broad jumps. So this is Nick Hansen. And look how his scissor step, he brings his knee up out of the way before landing. And look at his arms every single time. And then I have one more of him. This is a pretty cool one. He's, he's the coach in Uniclate and this is him jumping over his athletes. But look at the arms, using the arms every single time, re-swinging the arms. 
This is the scissor step, throwing the knee up and then coming behind at the last second. See how the knees come up every time? Throwing the arms every time. Knees up, throwing the feet forward. So that is a world record holder, Nick Hansen. Um, and he shared a lot of these coaching tips with me. Um, but sometimes putting tape on the floor can kind of help them visualize. So I have your, the starting line here. They can put a piece of tape of where they want to land each time. So I have a piece of tape there. So visually, you're trying to reach every time with that jump. And then you can have another piece of tape. That scissor, that scissor step, what happens if you don't move your leg in time, you don't get any distance. So what you want to do is move this leg before this leg lands. Did that make sense? <laughs> any questions? Couple, a couple other pointers, setting that first piece of tape on the floor, uh, have your athletes do just the standing broad jump to get an idea of how far that first step can be. One thing to be really careful about though, is if that first step is too far, it's really difficult to recover for the second step. So you, you need to work on the transition from doing a really far first step into the second step. And then lastly, to get a little more distance out of the last um, jump, when you're landing on both feet, you want to visualize or have your athlete visualize throwing their heels out forward, reaching out forward with their heels and landing um, wide and low. Ugh. Yeah. And one thing is if they ever fall, fall um, forward, so if I fall forward, that means they could have gone further, which is yep. a good sign. It means yep. they put the brakes on too soon and they didn't lift their, their legs up. Um, so if they're falling forward, you can let them know you're stopping yourself too soon. That's what Nicole was saying. You got to reach, bring your legs up and reach. Yep, reach with those heels out as far forward as they can, landing low and wide. Any questions? Could All we right. see that uh, video, Kyle, one more time? That second one, that one where he's jumping over, that was really. Okay, that's, yeah, I could show that. It's Nick, Nick Hansen. Nick, sorry, you're Kyle, that's it. Yep. yep, yeah. Okay, here it is. So watch arms every single jump. He doesn't cross his scissor leg until the last moment. Knees up every time. And this is where you throw your legs, bring your knees up and throw your feet forward. Thank you. Yep. And just a heads up, you're gonna use that same jumping technique, throwing your heels out forward for kneel jump as well. Even though we're not talking about, and we're not doing that event yet, but just a heads up on that. So wrist carry is our last event for, for today. Kyle, I just need you to bring me back to host. I didn't uh, give me the option to oh, host. Um, there. Perfect. Hang on a second, Adele. Um, no problem. So, Darlene, I'm not exactly sure. Um, what you're meaning with this, some have the dominant foot higher than the other, and some judges consider it a scratch. Dominant foot, how? I'm, I'm, I'm not quite um, understanding. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Um, I've been coaching for 
I don't know, 12, 13 years now. And we've gone to competitions where I've seen an athlete has a good takeoff. I mean, their takeoff, they take off on both feet, but their dominant foot comes out a little early. And the judges consider it a scratch because they think it's like a step off, uh, like a one foot step off or a one foot takeoff. I mean, it's, if, if it's hard to catch. I'm sorry, go ahead. It's hard to catch because I've been asked to step in um, and watch the uh, scissor broad takeoffs because they got into arguments over the takeoff, the where the dominant foot. It's a good takeoff. They take off on both feet, but okay. The, the dominant foot comes out a little early. Okay, so if you have that, or if you're concerned One. about that with your athletes when they're practicing, shoot a video clip of it um, and, and text it to me and I can take a peek at it and say whether or not it's a good takeoff or not. Okay. So if you're concerned about it and um, I can put my number, my, I'll put my number in the, uh, send it anytime. And if I'm available, I'll respond to it as quickly as I possibly can. And yes, the cultural elements, Tyler, um, are for jumping, used for jumping, like from ice flow to ice flow, either out on the ocean or from one side of the river to the other in the spring or the fall, when the ice is breaking up or when the ice is forming. Any more questions about scissor broad jump? All right, moving on to wrist carry. This event is called the wrist carry. An athlete will start by sitting on the floor in a crisscross position, or they can put their legs in any position that they would like. From here, they will take their strong hand and place it out in front of them, curl their fingers in to their fist, laying their thumb over. This is a closed fist position. When she's ready, she'll prepare her wrist and wrap it around the stick. After she wraps her wrist around the stick, she will grab her forearm with her thumb and fingers wrapped around. Now she can position her body facing forward or off to the side, whatever is most comfortable for the athlete. Once she gets set, she will tell her carriers to lift. If you are at the junior level, the carriers are the coaches and parents. If you're at the senior level, they're teammates from your school, or you are allowed to borrow teammates from other teams. At the junior level, this is a timed event. At the senior level, this is a distance event. When she's ready, she will tell her carriers to lift. So athletes, parents, and coaches can carry several different ways. They can carry like this, or they can switch their hands over, or they can also cradle the stick in their elbow and grab their fist. You'll see Kay pushes up off of the floor, being carried only by her wrist. At the senior competition, the teams run. At the junior competition, they walk. The wrist carry stick is 48 inches in length and 1 and 5 16 inch in diameter. The wrist carry was played to help develop the skills for hunters working together and carrying heavy loads. one more junior video or um, eighth grader demonstrating. I think on the floor, usually people sit cross-legged. 
This is the wrist carry. Harry's gonna start by sitting on the floor. Usually people sit cross-legged. He's gonna take his strong hand and make a fist. Wrap it around the stick. With his free hand, he's gonna grab below his wrist. When he's ready, only by his wrist will he hang on the stick. He'll lift himself up along with the two carriers trying to lift him up. Parents, coaches, family, and friends can lift. starts when Harry is lifted up off the floor. Whoever can hang on the longest is declared the winner. And we'll show a quick little demonstration of um, one of our juniors doing this. There you go, Madden. Good job. Keep holding on. Hold on. Super hard. You got it. You got it, buddy. Good job. Seven seconds flat. Yeah, so don't. Uh, just a reminder, make sure we can see the whole body so we can tell that the athlete is actually off of the floor and then bring the timer into the video so we can see the time. Um, when I review the videos, <clears throat> I have a stopwatch also in my hand and I'm watching from the takeoff as soon as the feet leave the floor until the feet touch the floor. And it's been, uh, it's been pretty spot on for most of the uh, videos that are submitted. Um, for wrist carry, it is timed only. They can be uh, carried forward if you want to, to practice that event or you can just stand there like they did in the juniors, or you can have a station, build a stationary place for the athletes just to hang. Um, Kyle's kind of got one set up there, so I'll let him take over from here. So um, in my setup, this is probably not high enough off the ground, but I'm just using it as a demonstration. Um, you really want to be able to lift the kids up high enough off the ground so they can actually tuck their legs. But um, some coaching advice is, I got two cameras so you can see my hand. If my other camera is, looks like it's delayed, but um, I think the biggest thing is you don't wanna start up here with your arm already extended. You wanna bring your arm and keep it close into your body. And it's almost like you're doing a pull up on one hand, keeping the arm in close, starting it off close to the bar. So the athlete gets to choose how high they start. Don't have them start like that because then they're already starting to sag and fall off. Um, when they lift, you can rotate. So sometimes they, they're, they feel like they're, they have to hold that position, but you wanna kind of let your body naturally lift. And if it rotates, let it rotate. A lot of athletes kind of have this to the side. Um, sometimes kids, if they're really just trying to strength train before they're able to actually do it, they'll hang onto the bar with their hand and just um, hold it there for a while, engaging the, those muscles um, before they can actually do the wrist, actual wrist carry. Any questions on that one? Anything to add, Nicole? Yeah, a couple of things too is they can sit sideways, backwards, any position, it doesn't really matter. They can have their legs crossed. They can have them up together. Some kids will start with their legs crossed and then they'll bring them up to the side position. Um, a damp cloth, just to make your wrist damp. And a lot of kids at state will blow on their 
hot air on their wrist just to get a touch of dampness or they have a, a damp towel that they can use. Um, and keeping it close, if the athletes start with their hands right up tight on the stick, can you show that, Kyle? So wrap around and then bring your hand all the way up, yep. And if it's touching the stick, that's okay. It Because as soon as they have pressure on, this hand right here pulls away, pulls away, yep. And just remember that if their hand does slip down, they do not have to, uh, they cannot re-grip. They have to just keep holding on right there. And I'm hoping Adele can pull up this video of this fourth grade girl um, who won the wrist carry. <clears throat> yes, um, Darcy, you can use a wrist carry stand. Okay, this is Eulalia Roman doing wrist carry. That's so nice of you to offer this. <laughs> you like that, did you? You let me try it. Ten. So Greg Built a contraption for her to hang off of, which is fine. I mean, she's swinging all over the place, but. Um, Twenty. You're doing good. It's a pretty amazing feat here. We Looks can't really beautiful. see the wrist. We can't really see the wrist very 30. good. But when she comes good. off, it looks, you can tell that it's her wrist and she's not holding on with her hand. So Darcy, yes, they can use a wrist carry stand. Um, that, that would be, that's just fine. <laughs> Any other questions about wrist carry? All right. So any questions um, at all about any of the other, about the events that we've covered or any questions about registration or the rules, um, awards or, or like that? Actually, what day was uh, registration open until? It's open through the entire process. The entire event, okay. Yeah, through the entire event. <coughs> but it closes for Alaskan High Kick, Scissor Broad Jump and Risk Carry on April 11th on, at midnight. And the way that we register, is that just, um, just uploading their stuff to the um, platform? Um, you have to register the athletes individually, or the athletes need to register themselves. Adele, I, was trying to look, I was trying to look for the link and I couldn't find it. Adele, can you send the link to everybody? Yes. Yeah. If okay. you're able to um, hi, uh, follow the link here. Click here. Okay. I thought it was going to be like a, a web link. Um, I'll have to make sure it gets posted on our NYO website. That's probably what, um, what the issue is. Uh, but okay. you can click this link here. Um, or I can even, I can even share it with you guys. I should have that in the email. In the chat box. Okay. And then again, um, I put my number in the chat box and from last night's meeting, if you've got an athlete <clears throat> that needs, that you're not quite sure if it's the right way or you want a little bit of help with the coaching, uh, feel free to shoot me a text or even um, shoot me <clears throat> a short video clip of the athlete doing the event and I can say, yeah, this is good or maybe they need to use their arms a little bit more in this, in this, in this part or um, what, look at their feet. Um, or just uh, just general information about the event itself. Feel free to uh, shoot me a text and I'll get to you as soon as I possibly can. And if we don't have any more questions, we'll let you guys go free for the rest of the evening. We know it uh, kind of cuts into dinner time, but um, this is the way it worked out. <laughs> and our next uh, meeting will be next 
actually Tuesday, right? For the two foot high kick. Um, what are we doing next week? Ah, where's my sheet? Okay, so Tuesday, yep, Tuesday, April 6th at 5 p.m. We've got toe kick, nil jump, and one hand reach. So next Tuesday at 5 will be our next training session. <clears throat> You're welcome, Tyler. Thank you, everybody. Um, this is being recorded, so if you need to access it, uh, Adele will send a link out. And feel free to, again, email us, text us, and we'll get answers to as quickly as possible. Um, have a great uh, Friday tomorrow and a great weekend. Everybody stay uh, warm and safe. Thank you, guys. We'll have it posted on our uh, YouTube channel. Um, and as soon as it's posted, I, I will send it out. I'm still waiting on the coaches meeting to get posted, um, but as soon as that's done, I will provide that to you guys as well. Have a good evening, guys. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. See you next, uh, next week. Adela, is there anything you need from me? Not off the top of my head, no. Um, I think... Uh, I think that's